Okay, should we buy or sell cotton futures? And we will also look at an ETN. So first off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then spin around and do your good deed of today by liking and subscribing. So, cotton 2. It's in the softs category. It sounds a bit odd, but it's just called softs. Well, it doesn't sound that for odd for cotton, but it might sound a bit odd for lumber. Okay, 89% away from the 52-week low, 6.5% away from the highs. So, we have seen a spectacular move in cotton futures. Huge! Um, very spectacular, epic, uh, there's, there are many adjectives that could be used to describe a, a chart that looks like this. Uh, but it bears mentioning that we have seen epic moves in cotton before that have uh, been answered uh, by very substantial bear markets. Like here, an obvious bear, and this was in 2011. You know, this was not, you know, the global financial crisis. All of a sudden, then you had a bear market. Let's see whether this here was a bear market or not. So from this high to this low, yeah, bear market territory minus 23-ish percent. Then all of a sudden in 2018, leading into 2020, it had a 46% bear market. So obviously, the bulls are still in control, but we just have to accept that cotton lives its own life. It can have big bull markets and bear markets when it wants to. Looking at the daily data points, uh, we see some pullback, uh, but still we know we are up very substantially. Uh, a key level you know, for the bulls is this blue 100 day moving average. Uh, it's been a nice risk reward opportunity to buy into cotton, but currently it, it is very stretched. Um, looking at the RSI here, on the weeklies, we are very high historically, so it is risky. Uh, and when we look at the PPOs, uh, which measure the distance between price and the various moving averages here to the left, we are very high. Uh, of course, that we are high doesn't mean that we have to go down. When we go to the daily data points, uh, and uh, yeah, we we are high, but we have seen a bit a bit of a, a bit of a cool down, but still elevated. So uh, when you look at a chart, and then you ask yourself the question about what should you do, you then need to look at the current context and look back and ask yourself what usually happens when we have this setup. What we did see here in the charts is that we are very high. We are definitively overbought, but uh, in, a, in a very substantial way. Further, we also saw that cotton regularly has, you know, substantial bear markets after big moves to the upside. So I do think I will give the technicals here to the bears. Uh, so I give the bears here a minus three. Uh, it's simply that if I was, you know, awarded, you know, a uh, hundred grand, but I had to either be long or short cotton for the next, let's say, six months. Would I then be long or short? I would feel more comfortably, more comfortable being short cotton at these levels. Let's look at seasonality for cotton. So, to the right here in red over the last 10 years, blue over the last 7, and green over the last 5, they all agree that leading into the late part of May, 25-ish, we usually see weakening, meaning bearish 
seasonality for cotton. Uh, over the last 10 and 7, seven years, the weakness extends all the way into the 15th of September. And to the left, over the last 5 years, we see that May is substantially, we we substantially weaker than, than April, uh, and also, frankly, June and July. Then the last uh, 10 years, May is the weakest month. Then the last 20 years, May is the weakest month, only closes higher 35% of the time, with an average 4% loss. This means that the current month, May, generally speaking, is favorable to the bears. Given that we are still rather overbought, the setup is rather interesting. So I do think I will give the bears here a minus 5. This is interesting as seasonality. It gives an edge uh, to the bears uh, for sure. Uh, when it comes to fundamentals, uh, so fundamental analysis for natural resources, it is uh, tricky uh, because, um, you know, uh, the thing is that uh, they obviously have fundamentals, uh, but uh, the financial markets, they are forward looking. What we did see in the charts is that there's been many times historically where cotton has been on a very big move only to see a very substantial pullback the pullback happened because uh, there was you know a disconnect uh, between the price and the fundamentals so cotton was repriced as it were given that cotton has been on an absolutely spectacular rally. I don't think there's much risk that um, um, there's pessimism when it comes to the cotton price, meaning that cotton is underpriced. I would be surprised if undervalue uh, is the major issue here. But given the complexity of fundamental analysis for natural resources, I will give this one just a mild number, so I give it a minus one uh, in favor of uh, the bears. Next, we will look at relative performance. So, there is an 87% correlation with the S&P 500, 94% with the DBA, which is the Agriculture ETF. Then we have an almost perfect correlation with the BAL. B -L -A, so B -A -L, that is the ETF slash ETN uh, for cotton. Uh, and it is very good to have these kinds of correlations. It means that the ETF does a pretty darn job, pretty darn good job, uh, reflecting um, you know, the cotton commodity tracking it accurately, because that can be a major issue. And uh, one way you can, you know, detect issues, you know, tracking errors, uh, that is if you see uh, mediocre correlations. But at least long term, it works. Uh, we have minus 4% with the dollar index, daily data points, minus 38% with S&P 500, 84% with DBA. I mean, the correlation here with uh, ball is really good, 99%, so very good. You see that in this period here, 2018, the correlation did become a bit mediocre temporarily, uh, but it was quickly, well, relatively quickly, quickly resolved. I'm not entirely sure what happened here. Maybe there was some complexities in the cotton market. Maybe liquidity issues could be a bunch of stuff. But looking longer term, you see that this the Bell ETF is great. Okay, 82% positive correlation with the dollar index. So what happens with DBA, which is the uh, agriculture fund, is going to have an impact on cotton. 
So here is the chart and we have seen a very substantial move. We broke out above the 200 week moving average, pulled back to test it, then off to the races. Uh, yeah, really, really a nice uh, move. You see here that uh, so this is a bit interesting. Um, so uh, let me, I think we have to use red here. So you see that there was an attempted breakout. Uh, so we don't have like a failure uh, at this point. But we do see that, you know, uh, the bulls are struggling a bit with that level. So let's zoom in a bit here. Uh, let's go to the daily data points. Yeah, so the blue 100 day moving average, uh, it's, it's been pretty key uh, when it comes to, you know, the, the big bull rally we have had in uh, agriculture. Uh, we are seeing something a bit rounding top-ish here. Um, but uh, let's, you know, explore a bit further. Uh, to be perfectly clear, um, having a pullback, you know, I mean, reversion is very natural. Uh, you know, even in, you know, a bull market, you do have, I uh, mean, reversions. And uh, the rally we have seen in agricultural commodities has been really, really, really big. Uh, you're looking here at you know, the RSI and the PPO, especially look here at you know the 100 week moving average PPO. We reached an extreme level that we haven't seen since uh, this super rally here in 2011. And you know that uh, super rally definitively, um, yeah, it was followed by some very substantial repricing of agricultural commodities. Let's look at the daily data points. Yeah, pulled back to a level on the RSI that has a tend tendency, frankly, to attract buyers. Hmm. Here is the relationship between cotton and the agriculture ETF. So we have seen that cotton massively outperformed, you know, broader agriculture for, you know, quite some time now. Uh, it did break out above this these highs. Um, yeah, I mean, but but it, it's been on a very big move. That's that's the the thing here. Uh, there's recently been some time cycles with the, the, this pair, uh, and they have been rather clean-ish. Uh, the time cycles suggest underperformance for uh, for cotton leading into uh, late this year early next year. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, but let's explore further. Of course, you know, the more data we get, uh, the more confident uh, conclusions can... Yeah, we do not get any... Yes, we do get data from the seasonality forecaster. So cotton tends to underperform um, the agriculture ETF. Um, in in May uh, and the, the May seasonality that's something that we uh, we learned about you know before so it makes sense but looking in green here over the last five years and blue over the last seven years we do actually see that there's a tendency for cotton to outperform a bit but looking in red over the last ten years then cotton tends to underperform all the way here into uh, September. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so now let's finally compare the DBI with the S&P 500. So we do it like uh, this, and then we get, go like uh, that. Okay, uh, so I have talked about uh, these two before, and uh, we do have something that looks very much so like a monster rounding bottom that is bullish. Let's uh, zoom in a bit here. Mm -hmm. And also get you know, this uh, tool. I think that the RSI can be a bit... You have to be careful about using technical indicators when you are doing these you know, pair comparisons. But things like the RSI, it makes some sense. Uh, it, it, it's a good tool to notice whether there's been uh, an abnormal move to the upside or the downside. Yeah. 
we do see here on the RSI that um, you know the bull move here in DBA, you know, the strengthening vis a vis the S&P 500, it's been very strong. And historically, it's definitively on the high end of the spectrum. So you you shouldn't be shocked if you do see some pullback. Yeah, so let's go here and look at the seasonality. So when we do look at the seasonality data, um, yeah, uh, we usually see that agriculture underperforms the S and P five hundred leading into twenty ish July. All things considered, I do think I will give this minus three on relative performance. So we do end up with a score of minus three. The data is more supportive of bearish trades than bullish. The key line in the sand is that we are overbought. Um, so there is a pretty decent uh, probability that we will see a pullback, especially given that uh, other metrics corroborate uh, the technicals, especially the seasonality data. And we also, you know, got some seasonalities when we looked at relative performance. It certainly looks like, you know, cotton, uh, you know, is very much due some pullback. That doesn't mean that uh, it's the big, I mean, reversion that uh, uh, we should, you know, gamble on. Uh, the thing is that all big moves start small, both bull rallies and also sell-offs, you know, they start on the minutes chart, then the hourly, then the daily, then the weekly. Whatever you do, of course, uh, you should definitively use stops uh, and uh, yeah, get VIP access.